We're on to 100 mile per gallon car brushers again here. And my question in this edition is, just how long have inventors sought the 100 mile per gallon car brushers? And just how often have those inventions been bought out? We'll take a look at that in this edition. Hi, David Vizard here. You guys are watching PowerTech 10. In this edition 192, we are going to take a look at the question of the myth or magic of the so-called 100 mile per gallon carburetor. Now this is the second uh, episode on this subject. You need to go back and look at episode 190 to find out where we started from. And it's an ongoing series. You may ask yourself, just how common can the endeavors for a 100 mile per gallon carburetor be? Surprisingly more than you may think and they all start sooner than you might think in the 140 years so far era of the automobile. I want to start the ball rolling here by uh, looking at a couple of examples to see what we're up against in our endeavor to establish whether or not the 100 mile per gallon carburetor can be achieved or that it's bullshit. So I'm going to put this picture of this uh, uh, Ford, it's a French word so it's actually pronounced coupe, not coupe, but anyway, I, I will continue to pronounce it as Ford coupe. Now this is a flathead motor, uh, my dad had a car similar to this or similar in engine, it was a Ford V8 Pilot with the uh, the bigger version of the uh, flathead motor. I think this is the smaller one. Can't remember the cubic inches right off my head. Something like 210 cubic inches, whatever. Anyway, the thing is, is the route I'm going down at the moment to uh, uh, make a point here has been inspired by a fellow head porter, a friend of mine, from way back when and I see an email from him on my computer and I think I've forgotten he existed that's my brain surgery uh, as soon as I saw that email I thought Jesus Christ I haven't spoken to him for turns out he tells me it's 10 years anyway the thing is is the guy's name's Mike Holler by the way now the thing is with Mike is he has delved into the history of carburetors claiming high mileages and the guy has got a wealth of knowledge in fact it is his contacting me that inspired me to do this video so when i say i've done this video it's really a joint effort between mike and i he supplied a just a ton of information on the history and the patents involved and I knew there was a lot of patents out there and a lot of ideas I had no sense of the number of patents and ideas that have been going around on this carburetor in fact from what I can gather the first attempt at a high mileage carburetor actually took place before the turn of the 20th century it was a carburetor which relied solely on vapor to run the engine now wouldn't make much horsepower on it but but back then if you could go 15 miles an hour that was great 
that was the cruising speed of a horse and carriage, except it didn't rely on muscle for the power, but gasoline. Anyway, take a look at this Ford Coupe here. Uh, I know the engine well because I've built them. Now this particular model, if I remember rightly, had a compression ratio of something like 6 to 1. And the car, if you can read the uh, stuff underneath, and I'll home in on it, the car was unmodified other than it was equipped with the Pogue carburetor. Now, he claimed to have covered 1,800 and 80 miles that's rounded off on 14 gallons of fuel whereas a similar car following or doing the same route used 106 gallons for the same distance now how does that work out in miles per gallon let me get my piece of paper here i wrote it down after calculating it the pogue equipped car did 134 miles per gallon yeah, right. The other car did 17.7. .7. Now, I am going to assume that they are US gallons, not Imperial gallons. No, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's assume they're Imperial gallons. They're bigger, so he should be able to go further on them. So I'm going to give this car a 20% benefit of the doubt on their side. Now, here's the thing. I've done a lot of modeling of cars to find out what the projected miles per gallon would be with a given engine which we also modeled for it from data collected from the dyno the car was modeled on tests we did actually on the car rolling it downhill towing it with strain gauges and all that good stuff and calculating the aerodynamics uh, uh, from uh, tests where we isolated friction from it. Now, that's another tale altogether how to do that. But here's the point. Knowing the engine and having run them on the dyno, I know what kind of fuel efficiency they have with a compression ratio a lot higher than this one's got. And it's just a matter of maths to calculate what it would be with a six to one compression. I also can work out from the drag coefficient and the rolling resistance and the drag from the tires how much force it would take to go any given speed. I also know how much energy is contained in a gallon of fuel, an imperial gallon of fuel. I also know what the engine will do at part throttle generating the horsepower that will needed to make it go 40 miles an hour. I'm giving it real break here 40 miles an hour because these tests were done in 1934 or 35 the roads weren't as good so i'm going to say 40 miles an hour not a speed we do today from these numbers i can calculate what my calculations give for the stock car having used 106 gallons and see how close it is if that's close i then can calculate what it is for the pogue uh, equipped a car and I guarantee you we're going to end up with figures which are impossible in other words there's not enough energy in the gasoline to do what they're doing in other words that means that these all other things I can think of not being somewhere off in the wild which I'm not figuring in here means that it didn't do it so right there, that's our test. Now I'm going to show you what those numbers are next issue. But anyway, let me carry on with what I was saying about Mike here. What he's done for me is find a whole load of uh, uh, carburetors and I'm going to sort through some and make notes on them. But the point is this. How much of this can we say can be backed up? I mean, there's guys that are claiming 200 to the gallon. Now, I can tell you now, that's definitely not possible. Unless we're talking about a moped. If we're talking about 200 miles per gallon with a four-seat car where they seat the people in comfort and typical weight, and it's just 
the car brush that they put on there, then I'm going to make a bet. It's total BS. Now, Mike has got a few things to say on this, but he's got to research them first before he can, how shall I say, put them over on this show. It'll be another issue down the road. But the point is this. What he's got to uh, research is there's very scanty information on apparently. So he's got to try and sort out what the BS is and what's not. And even then, that may not be the case. So we're going to have a situation in the next issue where we're going to make some statements that we research. We're not going to guarantee the truth of it, but if anyone wants to comment on it that knows better, please tell us. Same goes for this. Now, let's get on with where I was here. Well, it's getting close to winding up this edition. There's a whole lot more that we're going to talk about on what's gone in the past and what we might have to look forward to in the future. But before we go, I want to say something about uh, Mike's book here. Um, well, not only his book, but he's got a video. Uh, and I'll put the uh, link below here. But the book, um, this is now out of print, but it's got a lot of very interesting stuff. This is not proof of the fact that the so-called claim 200 miles per gallon carburetors exist. It's just the research on what's gone by before and what was put out. So here's a copy of Mike's book. And if you come across a used one, like I say here, buy it. Now, that's going to wind everything up for today, but look for part three, which is coming up. And we're going to look at some of the modern attempts to get miles per gallon based on carburetor size for the engine. Is smaller better? We'll look into that. So thank you for watching and I will see you on the next edition.